You'll notice in the Project Center, when there are issues, risks, or documents that have been posted within a project site, a symbol will appear in the Indicators column. If I select the Abaco Upgrade Project and go up to the ribbon and click Project Site, my project site for that individual project opens in a new window. On the main page to the site, you will see a summary of any deliverables, issues, and risks. From the Quick Launch on the left-hand side, you can access the Document Repository under Project Documents. You can also access any of the SharePoint list items, such as issues, risks, deliverables, and the calendar and tasks. We'll start by opening the issues page. Opening the issues page, I can see that there are two issues that have already been posted against this project. To add another issue, I can click the link to add a new item. The new issue form opens on the screen. There is a mandatory field that indicates I must enter the title to this issue. I'll type an issue related to resource availability. Anytime you post an issue, you have the option of identifying an owner of the issue and the individual that you've assigned it to. You can use your browse to connect to your Active Directory, and if you know the first letter of the individual you're looking for, you can type the first letter in the find once the person is selected and that person's added to the owner field. You can do the same under the assigned to. If I click on my browse, type the first letter of the individual, select the person's name. By default, the template gives me three status options, active, postponed, or closed. If I'm logging a new issue, I'll set it up as an active issue. By default, there are three categories. Your project manager may have customized this list. The priority field gives me an option of high, medium, and low, and I can use the due date to identify when this issue should be resolved. As you scroll down the form, you'll see a discussion field which allows you to enter more details about the issue, and once the issue is resolved, you can enter a resolution. If this issue is linked to a specific task or a risk, under the ribbon custom commands, you have a link items icon. The link items dialog box opens up and shows you a list of tasks, documents, issues, or risks. So if I would like to link this issue to an existing risk, I can select the list of risks, toggle the checkbox in front of the risk, and click OK. In the issue form, there is a notation that this is linked to a risk. I'll now save the issue form, which returns me to my current list of issues. This is a default view of all items. You can filter this view based on any of the fields that are included in the view. If I choose to view only issues which are considered high priority, I can select my priority field and change the setting to high. If I want to return to all issues, I'll clear the filter on the priority field. If I'd like to see issues that are assigned to Linda, I can filter on the assigned to field. Let's talk about adding risks. On the quick launch, I'll click risks to open up the risk page, and there are two risks which have already been logged. I can add a new item, or I can edit an existing item. If I click the down arrow on the existing item, I can choose Edit Item and open up the risk form. On the risk form, there are similar fields such as title, owner, and who the risk is assigned to. There is a status and a category field and a due date. In addition, you have two required fields. Probability should be entered based on a percentage, anywhere from 1 to 100%. So if there is a 50% probability of this happening, and the impact, which should be entered on a 1 to 10 scale, is an impact of 8 impact on my project, with a 50% chance of occurring. Like the issue, I can put in a detailed description, 
And I also have fields which allow me to outline what my mitigation plan is and what my contingency plan is. I can identify if there's a key trigger that will alert me of the issue occurring, and I can specify a trigger date. Down at the bottom, I can see any issues, documents, or risks that are linked to this. If I go to my custom commands, I can link items. And if I wanted to link this risk to a document that describes it in further detail, I could change my list of link items to my document library. From my document library, I could select the appropriate document checkbox and click OK. At the bottom of the risk form, I can now see reference to the document that's linked. I'll save the changes that I've made to this risk. Now let's talk about uploading documents. The document library is a great place to upload documents you need to share with your team. You can click the Add Document link, browse on your local disk or network drive, select the document, and upload it to the site. The information about the document can be entered, such as the document name, a title for the document, the owner, and the status. You've got three different status options to choose from, draft, ready for review, and final copy. When you click the save, it'll add the document to the document library. The deliverables page will list items that the project manager has flagged as key deliverables within the project. They could be tasks, they could be milestones. These key deliverables are flagged within Microsoft Project and then when the project manager publishes the schedule, the deliverables will appear here in the project site. Additional deliverables can be added using the new item button. If I were to type in a new deliverable and select a scheduled start and scheduled finish for this deliverable, this deliverable appears as part of the list in my project site. The next time my project manager opens the project, they will be alerted that a new deliverable has been added. They can choose to accept the deliverable in their projects, or they can ignore the new deliverable, and it will only show up in the project site. There is a link to call up a calendar. This calendar is not tied to any items within your project. It's a separate calendar that could be used to, to post items that are relevant for the project team. It could be something as simple as posting everyone's vacation time. There's also a task list. This, this is not linked to anything in the project. So both the calendar and the task list are standalone items that do not connect to tasks in the project. So think of this as more like an action items list that a project manager may use after coming out of a status meeting. When you add a new item here in the task list, you can assign responsibility to somebody. You can identify a status, a percent complete, and a more detailed description. By logging to do items here or action items that come out of a status meeting, it's a nice way to monitor the progress on these items. We've now discussed the items that are available in the project site. If I close the project site for this project, this returns me to PWA.